Alright boys and girls, this is Grandma Sheila and I have a really good story from Fiji that I want to read to you tonight. It's called, Where Did That Come From? There was a small school up in the mountain regions of the main island of Fiji. I heard it was struggling financially and they were considering shutting the school down. This is the only primary school in the area, so kids as young as six would have to leave home and live in a faraway boarding school to get an education. As it was, about 15 of the 65 children were living at the school during the week because they lived too far away from the school to get there every day. Some of the other kids had to swim across the river every single day to get to school. Can you imagine how wet and cold they would be doing that every day? Well, the man that wrote the story said, he got up early one morning and drove way up into the mountains. Eventually he reached the end of the road. I then had to swim across the river and walk the rest of the way up to the school. Well, he said when he got there, he found one of the most beautiful places that he had ever seen. The school had hundreds of acres of flat, fertile farmland along the river. The teachers and the children were only able to farm a few acres, as they had to do it by hand with nothing but sharp sticks. That was the only means by which the school had survived all these years. That night, he says he went out to look up at the stars in the Milky Way. It was so bright and it felt like he could just reach up and touch those stars. They had no running water, so they used the river water, which was a quarter mile away. This made it so they had outbreaks of dysentery which was like horrible, horrible diarrhea because they had to drink and use the dirty water. Well, during the rainy season, all the water was muddy and the people especially got sick then. And they had no electricity as they had had a Lister generator but it had broken down in the early 1970s, long time ago, and they could never afford to fix it. Well, this gentleman said that he spoke with the principal and he explained to me the desperate situation the school was in. He explained that there was a nonprofit group from the United States that would match any funds that the village or the school would try to get. They were trying to get a clean water system installed. Well, the man said as I was leaving, I thought to myself, I'm on my way to the airport, so why not give him the $160 that was in his pocket? And he thought, the gentleman here could put that $160 toward the $930 they needed to make a clean water system. He says that he waited until the very last minute. And then he reached into his pocket and he gave him that $160. That was all he had in his pocket. Well, he gave it to the man, then he headed to the airport. The following year, he came back. 
he returned to that little school to deliver some of the supplies they had just shipped over there. When the principal saw him coming up from the river, he ran and he hugged him and he said, come, come see what we've done. Well, I followed him behind the school and there stood a new water pipe coming up out of the ground. He reached over, turned it on, and out flowed beautifully clean water, and it was cool and nice. They had run pipes from the spring that was three miles away and put a clean water system on it. Well, when they put that water line in, they didn't want to be selfish and just keep it all to themselves. So they ran that pipe through three other villages so other people could have clean water too. Well, the man said he couldn't believe his eyes. They had running water, but how? He turned and said, where did you get all the money for this? He looked at me kind of puzzled and he said, from you. I didn't give you $930. No, you gave us $960. And the man said that he'd use $30 to buy a bus ticket to Suava and back to help get supplies. And he used the other $930 for half of this water project. I stood there thinking for a moment that this could not be true. Then I realized something very strange and wonderful had happened. So, he said, I don't think it was from me. I think someone then bigger than you or I touched that money as I gave it to you when it was touched from my hand to your hand, a miracle happened. <laughs> the man smiled and said, well, I think so too. I think you're right. Well, the other gentleman, he took a deep breath and said, now that you have running water, what do you need next? He looked at me and said quietly, it would be so nice if the children could have some flushing toilets. Can you imagine having, what did they say? 200 students and no flushing toilets or sinks? I, the gentleman had said, I'll see what I can do about that. A few months later, he returned to Fiji with his whole family. This time, they had 400,000 pounds of stuff, including six toilets, two sinks, and all the material needed to build a bathroom for them, along with lots of other stuff that they needed. Well, it took two days to take everything across the river by a bamboo raft and on up to the school. Well, they had one horse pulling it across the river and the poor horse, it, it just quit on them in the middle of the second day. Well, as they were taking everything across the river, he started to think about a better way to do it. You see, he actually said he was lazy at heart, so he was always trying to find an easier way to do something. He decided to buy a boat for this village. He knew that it should not have a motor because how expensive gas was, and it's hard to get there. Plus, the sticks that came up in the river would ruin the propeller 
on the bottom of the boat. So he came up with a way of using the river current to propel the boat from one side to the other. He decided that it would take a thousand foot steel cable and he would attach it in between two big mango trees, one on each side of the river. Then he would attach a set of huge roller bearings at the main cable that would roll back and forth across the river. Then he would take two smaller cables and attach the shorter one to the front of the boat and the longer one to the back of the boat. The boat, a 75 degree angle to the flow of the water, causing it to glide across the river. He said that he told the chief in the village what he was going to do and the chief had laughed and shook his head. Well, we came back later and installed that whole boat system. As he got ready to try the boat out for the first time, he noticed there sat the chief sitting down on the riverbank with two long bamboo poles. I asked what they were for, he said. And the chief laughed and he said, when Noah's boat doesn't go across the river, he can use one of my bamboo poles to push it across. I laughed, but I was thinking, I sure hope this works, or from now on I'll be as known as Mr. Noah. It worked, and now the children could get to school safely, even when the river flooded. The school had a, has a diesel Kubota tractor that this gentleman had bought for them, so all the villagers who live in the other two villages can get their produce to town now. Plus, a tractor meant that they could take much more of the acreage of land that they had to make bigger gardens to sell the produce in the villages. He was told a few days later that some government officials came and they took notes on how to build the same thing, that boat, in other villages throughout the island. Since then, the school has gone from 65 kids to 200 and the financial problems are all gone. They have been making so much money from their produce now that they've been able to lower their tuition costs and they're sending all the extra funds to the extra schools to help them. That's just one of the amazing things that has happened in my life that feeds my faith and optimism, he said. I believe that any time you set out to do in life to help others in need will work out. That's why he said that he believes so strongly that even greater things are going to continue to happen here in Fuji, Fiji, Fiji, sorry. If we stay focused on the needs of others, and he said he wanted each one of us to see that when you decide to st step out and help, it does work. Even if you think it's small, do it anyway. You never know how far $160 will go. Well, yes. He had given them $160 to help. That was all the money he had. But somewhere in the giving, God multiplied it. So they had the $930 they needed to make fresh water 
boys and girls, it never hurts to give what you have to help others. Thank you, boys and girls. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.